Okay, so this video is going to show you how you can create certificates of some kind. So in this case, my example is a certificate of completion for a professional development workshop or a course. And you can create these automatically by having someone fill out a form with some information and automatically their details go into the template that you've set up, which looks something like this or another variation on it. And it will automatically email them a PDF version of the certificate with their personalized information in it. So this is the end result. I've done a test version here. My name is populating the name area. And you can see that there's specific dates down the bottom here that has also come from the information in the form that I filled out. And all of the rest of this form has been preset in the template. So all of the other details are in the template. And this and this here are the only two bits of information that have merged into this form. Another example is this one here, a little bit plainer. And you can see this is what it looks like before the details have been merged into the form. This one says first name, last name and the online training that you completed. So that those bits of information are actually going to come from the form that the person fills out and it gets populated into the template that's been set up. Um, also the date down here as well. So what you need to do this is to first of all set up your certificate template and this can look any like anything you want it to look like. It can be kind of plain and boring like this one. This is a very old one <laughs> that we had set up and you can see that we have set it up so that the first name, the last name merge into this form. Also the title of the training that the person completed but this could be anything. It could be an event that someone's attended or a course that they've completed. It can be anything you choose and you will put that into the form which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, you can also have the date merge into the form as well. Uh, that could be up to you. You might manually put that into the template in the first place. It just depends on what you're using it for. So that's one version. Uh, this one over here is another version before it's had the data merged into it. Again, it's like that first one that I showed you. First name and last name are fields that we've set up to have merged into this and also the little date field down the bottom here. Everything else though is in the template itself. And the template, you can make it look pretty like this one. This was originally designed in Canva. We added it as a background into Google Slides and then just added text boxes over the top for where the data is going to merge to. Um, but you can do it like this one in Google Docs and you can again set this up. I set this all up inside Google Docs itself. It's pretty plain. It's pretty boring. <laughs> it's not very interesting, but it functionally works. So that's okay. So once you've set up your template, which is a Google Doc or a Google Slides document, then the next thing that you need is a form that people are going to fill out to for you to gather their information. So uh, I have an example here where this one is a PD certificate request form for a webinar that I've run. And basically people will see this form and fill it out. They'll put their details in like their first name, their last name, their email address. You have to have all those three uh, because you're going to need those to appear on the form. But you also need their email address in order to send them the completed certificate. So that has to go in there. And then what dates did you complete the training? We've chosen to put that in there so that people can fill that out because a lot of the webinars that I run are run at different times of the year or people watch them at different times on demand. So we don't always know when they're going to be completing the training. So they fill that out and whatever they put in this answer, that's what appears onto the merged form. We actually let them know that. Uh, this text will appear on your certificate exactly as you write it below. So that's just warning them that that's going to uh, show there. Also with the name fields, I'll just say that we have put with the first name as you would like it to appear on your certificate. So if they want their full name as opposed to a shortened name or a nickname, um, they need to just know that that's going to appear on the certificate. So in addition to that, we have a couple of questions that we just want to know feedback from people. You can have as many questions in your form and not all of the form information is going to end up in your certificate. So you can pick and choose which of these form fields is going to end up merged with your final document. So that's step one is to first of all set up that 
template. Step two is to set up the form that people are going to fill in. And I'm looking at the editing version of this here. Obviously, it looks a bit prettier when you're looking at it from the consumer point of view. And then if you've ever set up a Google form before, you'll know that in the responses tab up here, you can click this button to create a spreadsheet. Now, this is the key to all of this because the spreadsheet is going to do the hard work for you. So you create the spreadsheet, click on that, create a new spreadsheet and hit create. And that's going to give you a new spreadsheet. And as soon as someone fills out the form, the information is going to appear into this spreadsheet here. Super useful uh, and just quick and easy to do. So the way to get the information from the spreadsheet into this template is that you need to do a couple of things. First of all, in the spreadsheet, you're going to go into add-ons and you're going to look for AutoCrat. Now, AutoCrat is already installed for me. If you haven't done this before, you'll need to go to get add-ons. It will open up the Google add-ons store marketplace and you're going to search for it here. AutoCrat. And then you're going to click the uh, install button or, or get add-on. So you'll do that. Mine says installed because it's already in there. So I don't need to do that again. Once you've installed it and you go back to that add-ons menu, you'll see it as an option here. Now, what you'll need to do, and this is just for the first time when you're setting up a new form and spreadsheet, is to click launch. And you're going to give AutoCrat the information about which information from the form that you've set up is going to go into the template that you've set up. And how is that all going to work? So it's called a merge job. Uh, I'm going to show my age, but for those of you who grew up in earlier days of computers, you may have done a mail merge type task before in Microsoft Word, where you put information into a document automatically. It's that same kind of thing here. So you'll click new job and you're going to name it. So I'm going to just call this PD Certificate Autocrat Demo and click Next. Now you're going to find the template that you've selected, that you've set up ahead of time. So you're going to find it in Drive or you can hit Create Example to go from scratch. I wouldn't recommend that. Set it up ahead of time and then find it in your Drive. And I do believe it's this one here because it's a recent document. I'm going to hit select and hope for the best. <laughs> and then AutoCrat automatically looks at that document and kind of assesses where there's information in there that it might use. So I'm going to go next over here. And because I've used special things, I've used special text boxes in my template. I'm just going to go back to that for a moment. In this template, what you need to do to tell AutoCrate where you want information to appear is that you add a text box and you write the, you write this and this, this uh, what is it, less than, less than signs, two of them. You write first name and then you put them at the end, the greater than signs, and you do the same for last name. Now, because that information is there inside a text box, AutoCrat automatically notices that and it says, oh, do you want to put the first name from the spreadsheet into the place where it says first name in the template? And you'll say, why, yes, I do. And then you'll do the same for last name. And then it's going to look for anything else that's set up in that way. So it's going to know that there is a little text box down here with the word date and it's inside the less than and greater than uh, fields again. So because you've set it up that way, it knows that those are the fields that you want to fill in. So going back to my spreadsheet here, that's what it's identified. It's gone, oh, okay, I can see that you've got first name, last name and date in there. And you're going to tell it which of the columns in your spreadsheet should match this. So if I click here, it's going to bring up these are the, the columns in my spreadsheet that I've got to choose from. So I want the first name to map to the first name, funnily enough. In this one, I want the last name to map to last name. And then I want date to map to which dates did you complete the training. So I'm confirming that that's where the information is going to go with AutoCrat. And then I click Next. Then you're going to tell 
how Autocrat how to name the file that it's producing. So it's going to produce a PDF file. Now you can just name this something really generic. So this is actually really for the person receiving it um, and also for you to a certain degree because if you want to find these forms that emerged uh, in the future, it's good to have a naming convention. So what we do is actually have last name, first name, name of event, name of webinar or whatever it is. And again, you use those same tags to tell Autocrat what to populate into the file name. So I can do first name, then I can do last name. Oh, I said I was going to do it the other way around. Anyway, I'll leave it like this. <laughs> and then I can do anything else I want after that. You can even put uh, webinar certificate. You can just type something. So when it produces the document, it's going to have Katie Wardrobe Webinar Certificate as the file name. Now, what what do you want this to end up being? For the certificates that we produce, we always end up sending the person a PDF version. And that's what I would recommend. Uh, if you send them a doc or a slides, it's something they can edit. You want to send them the PDF, which is the captured sort of version. And then multiple output mode means that it's going to produce separate PDFs, separate PDF files for each and every person that fills out your form. Um, and that's what I would suggest leaving this at as well. So you click next. You're going to say, where do you want this to go to? Do you want to choose a folder or send it to this Autocrat automatic folder? We have it set up so that we choose a folder in Drive. You can set something up, which is where all of your uh your files go to. I'm just going to leave it as the Autocrat one for the moment, but you can set up a folder specifically for this. I'll click next. I'm going to not worry about dynamic folder reference. You can do a few ninja things, but we won't worry about that for now. We don't use those options. We don't use this either. And then share docs and send email. So you can say, no, you don't want to share the doc with anyone. You just want it to end up in your own personal drive. That's not very useful. The whole reason for this is to send it automatically to someone. So I'm going to say, yes, I do want to share the document. Share it as a PDF, yes. And allow collabor collaborators to reshare. I don't think that, I don't think we've just got this set on yes. Um, and send from a generic no reply email address. You can use that or you can say, actually, I want to send this from my Google email account so that it, uh, it looks like it's coming from someone that they know. But you can send it from a generic no reply email address as well. And then you're setting up the email now. Again, you're setting up a template to uh, for, for when the person receives this email with the PDF attached. So to, now in the to field, you want the email to go to the email address of the person that has filled out the form. And because they put that in a separate field in their form, you're going to do, uh, I'm just going to click this little blue button here because it actually tells you what does the, um, what does the tag look like and you can click on that to fill it in automatically. So I'm going to put that in there, email address. I, I just clicked, so I opened this up, I clicked on it here. And then close this, clicked in the field and paste and that will appear there. So that's done. Um, if you want to add CC every time someone fills out your form and you want to copy it to yourself or to someone else, you can do that or blind copy it. Um, and there's reply to as well. Um, type in the subject. So it can be just something like your PD certificate or whatever it is. And then you can type a message. Hello. And then you can also uh, add another field here. Hello, first name. Hello, first name. Please find attached your certificate. Thank you for attending the webinar or whatever you want this to say um, from Katie. Then you can click next and this is important. So run form on trigger. Run form on trigger means that do you want this merge job to happen exactly at the time that someone fills out the form? You can say no if you actually want to save this up and do this once a day. There may be times where you want to do that. We have this set to yes and 
I'm just going to click yes to allow this to happen. So what this means is that if someone fills out this form at 3 a.m. my time, they will immediately get their certificate. If someone fills it out at 9 a.m. my time, they will immediately get their certificate. It just happens every time someone fills out the, uh, the form there. And then I'm going to just click save. Now this is confusing. The back button is on the right here and I always automatically want to click that, but you want to click save at this point because we're at the last step. So click save. It's going to save my job. I really hope I've set this up correctly. <laughs> and then uh, this is, the, this is the, the sort of the merge job that you've just finished setting up. Now, what the good thing is that if you test this out now, which I would highly recommend, you're going to test it out and make sure it works okay. If, if it does not work the way you expect or you need to fix anything, you can come back in to this existing merge job and you can fix it or change it however you want. So that's done now. We don't really need to do anything else. I'm going to close this and I'm going to go over to my form and oh my goodness, let's see if this works. I'm going to hit the uh, preview button. Can I fill it out in that view? I think so. Uh, let me put a my email address. Which dates did I complete the training? 25 August 2020. What would you say about the course? That's what we have as a standard thing. It's awesome. Do you have any other questions or comments? No. Submit. Now, hopefully when I've done this, I come across to the form and hopefully see that that information automatically has gone in there. Yes, it has. And what I'm hoping is that this and this should populate in a second. Now, I may not have set this up fully uh, correctly, so I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and just double check the... Oh, there it is. It just took a little while. Oh, it was like magic, wasn't it? So there we go. So Autocrat automatically made that happen in the background as soon as I'd filled out the form. Every time you do this, you get a, an ID for the document that's been generated. We don't really use that in any way. You get a URL for where it's been saved into Google Drive and you get a link to the actual document. Now, I can already tell you that I've, I've done the tags wrong for the name of the document because I can see first name, last name there. I should see Katie Wardrobe. But anyway, let's just have a little... Um, let's just click through and see what it looks like. Hopefully, it's merged correctly at least. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. So it put my name in correctly. It put the date in correctly. I need to go back and fill, fix up those fields. And I know it's because I should have selected those tags from that pull out menu that I showed you before. So if I did that, then it's going to fix it up. So if I've got to go back and fix something, I just go back into add-ons. I go back, go back to Autocrat, launch, and it will show me that merge job that I set up, the last step of my previous um, part before. When it loads. And that's it here. So to edit it or fix it, you'll click on the pencil button here. It takes you back into that step-by-step uh, -step process. So I don't need to change the first step. I'm going to hit next or next or next. All of this was okay. Here we go. Here's the bit that I did wrong. I had forgotten momentarily about the options of choosing from this pull-out menu. So I click here. I'm going to go first name. I think I just, it meant that I wrote them wrong. First name, space, last name, and paste that in there. And then that's it. So I don't need to go through all the other steps. I'm just going to hit save. And if I test that form again, hopefully... It should work. So there we go. We're done there. Let's just try it once more. Why not? I'll, I'll use a different name. Ella, because she's here bothering me, wanting me to do something with her. Put my email back in here. And which date? Oh, that's <laughs> wrong one. <laughs> Yay. Submit. Now let's go back to that form. That's all. So that's popped in there. 
fuel, there we go. And you can see now the name is correct, so I've done it correctly now. So that's the name of the certificate and it's all cool. And so at the other end of things, the person who's filled this out will automatically get a copy of this to their email with the attached PDF. I hope that helps. Good luck, everyone.